Okay, last topic. This is a tool you're going to be using for the next couple weeks more than once, and it's the spectrometer used in the lab. So what's a spectrometer? Well, spectrometers and spectroscopy is used to detect and identify different elements and compounds in terms of their, their light spectrum, and it's used in all sorts of fields, forensics, medicine, oil, optics, lighting displays, lasers, you, know, you name it. Basically, any time in the lab we've had a plot where you've had, you know, you looked at something and then you said this is wavelength and this is intensity and it shows all these peaks and stuff, how do you measure that? Well, that's been measured with a spectrometer. Okay, And so looking inside a spectrometer, you have a couple things, and I'll go in order here. The first thing you have is an SMA connector. This is where an optical fiber, which carries the light in, connects. The second thing you have is a slit. And this is for, this is for the actual model we're using in this lab. It's made by Ocean Optics. It's got a slit, which can be varied but from 5 to 200 microns. So if it's a slit, you can imagine that if you make it 200 microns wide, you're going to get more light into the system. However, if you make it too wide, then you'll lose your spectral resolution, meaning it's tougher for it to tell between adjacent wavelengths. You'll see why in a second. So typically you set it to a little bit lower value, and sometimes you have, if you have plenty of light, you'll take it all the way down to 5 microns, such that you can get the best spectral resolution to separate out all the peaks here. Now, you have a filter here, which basically blocks light except for the light you want in there, so we don't want infrared or visible light, because these aren't used to detect that, so it filters that down. Then it hits this collimating mirror here, so light comes in, hits the collimating mirror, which then goes on to a diffraction grating. The diffraction grating does what, just exactly what you would expect it to. Basically, if you send in light, different wavelengths will then be spread out into different angles based on their wavelength, because diffraction is heavily wavelength dependent, right? And that spreading is helped a little bit by this focusing mirror, which helps it take it over here to the detector array. Okay, The detector ray has a focusing lens here, which basically, if I can try to, to draw it on here, it's a lens which is long and it's kind of like shaped like this. So as the light comes in, and then it focuses it down into a very narrow line here, which matches up with this small one-dimensional ray of photodetectors. Okay? So that's a detector, it's a linear ray of uh, charge coupled devices or basically like photodiodes. And so basically if I have photodiodes here and they light up, it's telling me the blue light is strong, green on out through red, and then you can read this out to figure out which parts of the spectrum have which intensities. And remember how I talked about the slit here? If you make the slit really wide, then all of a sudden you have a large width coming on here and basically then the green and the yellow start to blur together, the colors start to blend together because they're less tightly defined here. So if you make a small slit, you get better resolution because these things don't overlap and mix with each other spatially. But a small slit, you're going to get less light in. So you have a limit in terms of how sensitive these are. So it's a trade-off between the spectral resolution and being able to, to detect the light. So, if you look inside there at that photodetector array, the way it works is something like this. So let's say here's the light coming in. It's coming in, it's been split up into its wavelengths from blue to red, and it shines upon a photodiode array. Okay? The photodiodes are set up with voltage such that they're connected to capacitors, and when light shines on these, the more the light that shines on the photodiode, the more current that'll flow through it and charge up a capacitor. So in this case, let's assume that the the green light has the most and it really charged up this capacitor the most and there's not a lot of red light and not a lot of blue light and so they don't get charged up as much. So you charge these all up and then you're going to take these switches here which are solid state of course not mechanical switches which will connect to all of these capacitors and it'll read off the data and store it in this, this, this shift register here. Then it opens the switches so that we can have light then come in and to start filling it up the next time and then this shift register basically reads these out one bit at a time. So it'll read this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. It comes out serially, and it goes to whatever computing device you have uh, connected, which is probably more modern than this one shown here. So that just basically gives you an idea of how this thing works. You'll be using it for the next couple weeks. It's a pretty useful and fun tool to work with.